wall. I, I can't tell y'all how excited I am that some of y'all are standing. I know that's mean, but we never have this time of the crowd. So uh, there's a whole row on the front on the front down here, and I want you guys to remember we're in a Baptist church facility, so you guys all need to come down to the front. <laughs> and we do want to thank the uh, Baptist church, the Rock. Sometimes it's hard to get churches to let political events happen, but I think we all know how important it is that the voice of all parties gets heard and we have an educated voter elected. Yep. So uh, I'm going to ask to start our meeting off tonight. I want uh, Nancy Swint, she's our Bright Star Chaplain. She is going to uh, open us with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Jesus, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for everyone that has come out this evening, God to participate, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Texas. We thank you for Hopkins County, God. Lord, we just thank the people that have taken their time and their resources, God, to run, to represent the people here of Hopkins County. And Lord, we pray blessings upon them. Lord, we pray protection upon them and upon their families, God. And Lord, we just pray that this event tonight will be the one, God, that will be shown to you, God, as a blessing to you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you and we give you praise and we give you glory, God. And as folks leave tonight, Jesus, we pray for protection as they leave to go home. And we just give you the honor and the praise and the glory for you, Lord, are the only one that's worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. I, I, I want to take a moment. We've got two of our faithful uh, volunteers that are part of our Bright Star uh, that are not here tonight. And one is Debbie Harris. And she was doing the volunteer work up at the Republican headquarters. How many of y'all know where that is, by chance? Uh, it's Old Gold Romero Building on Broadway. We are so fortunate. That is going to be our headquarters. And Debbie was up there working, and she tripped and broke a foot, and she broke three ribs. So she's here in spirit. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to let y'all know that. Our other one is Melanie Finley. I think we have somebody running for office that might be related to her. But uh, it, I can't tell y'all how sick she must be to not be here to support Dennis. But regardless, she can't come tonight because she's caught that lovely disease that's going around. So she was kind enough not to share with us. So I want to have you guys all keep her in your prayers. Okay, Chris, who is our vice president, is going to lead us in the uh, pledges of our flags. <laughs> Y'all can go over there, Nancy and Crystal are over there. If you don't have, if you didn't bring your checkbook tonight, uh, take it home with you and then send it back to us. Or bring it, better than that, bring it back. It's uh, $35 a year and we invite men to come be members too and their associate members at $20. Also, what we do is one of our volunteer programs, which is this what the money goes toward, is the fact that we are putting these posters in God we trust in all the schools. And uh, Crystal Casey, last time I uh, know North Hopkins just got 60. Uh, South Hill got how many the other day? Uh, Sulphur Bluff got 20. Tw Sulphur Bluff got and 20. Casey delivered to South Hill, I'm not sure. South Hill got about 30, and then Kevin Hewitt was like 30. 
Oh, good. I don't know if y'all heard, but Cumbie's on the list, too. So just about any school they go to, uh, they're very excited to give us the opportunity to put the posters in there. But, uh, of course, if you feel in your heart you need to make a donation, we need money. They don't cost us, but what, $2 and... Two fifty, because we get them framed, and they're very nice. So, uh, and the other thing is, is we sell Bright Star T-shirts. So now I've hopped, um, we've, I've tried to raise money, and uh, which is what we have to do. None of this happens free, and uh, we have here with us tonight three of the very fortunate candidates that are not running opposed. So they are unopposed. And we've invited them to come up here. And the first one's going to be Judge Eddie Northcutt. Thank you. Um, I am in the final year of my third term. And I was fortunate for the second and third term to be unopposed. I have been asked, uh, since my first term uh, was a hotly contested election, I've been asked, What's the best way to run an election? So for all of you new candidates, Casey, take notes. Write this down. I'm going to write this down. The best way to run a campaign is on a post. <laughs> I found that to be uh, much better. Um, again, my name is Eddie Northcutt. I'm your district judge for the 8th Judicial District Court, which covers Hopkins County, Franklin, Rains, and Delta County. General jurisdiction court, but it handles primarily the felony criminal docket, so we're very, very busy. Um, we, it's been a, this last term with COVID and trying to keep courts open during the pandemic has been a real challenge, uh, but we've got some really, really good folks. Great district clerks, we've got our district clerk right here in all four of our uh, counties. Uh, they've helped our courts run very, very smoothly. We have not fallen behind like so many courts have. We were trying cases during the pandemic uh, at the Civic Center so that we could space people out and mask them up and continue right on uh, as we needed to. Um, and things have run really, really well. I want to thank you for the opportunity to serve you. I look forward to the opportunity for my fourth and final term. Thank you very much. Attorney Dusty Raby is another one that has fallen to the illness that is floating around, and so she's not here. But we do have Constable Precinct 2, John Beadle. I know I saw John here. <coughs> there he is. Good evening. Nobody clap when I want. <laughs> uh, I ran, uh, this is my, I'm just completed my third year on my first term, uh, 30 years in, in county government as of 2024 started out in Dallas County. Last three have been a joy to be here <laughs> rather than there. Um, kind of like Judge Norcutt has had a uh, heated race on the, on the first campaign and I agree 100% that this is the best way to do it. I uh, don't have an opponent this year. Uh, so y'all got me for four more years, but it is a joy to be here to see the sheriff's office, the constable's office, the district clerks, the judges, everybody in this county works together. Amen. And it is, it is, I've been 26 years in Dallas and you can't imagine how dysfunctional it is, but you go to the commissioner's court here, you ask for something, you justify it, pretty much gets taken care of. Um, we do bailiff the JP courts. We help out in the county courts and Judge Newsom's court, Judge Barrett's court. Everybody works together. And I can't tell you how lucky, if you're just a resident, the average citizen in this county, how good you've got it. But you do. It's a, it's a joy. I look forward to coming to work every day, and I appreciate y'all coming out. Wasn't this many people when I ran, so it's pretty <laughs> big crowd. I think maybe we had, what, Beth, maybe 30, 30 people at max, so it's good to see people getting out. We need to get out. Yeah. Uh, Judge Cummins' court this year run 195 eviction cases. So I don't care what Joe says, the economy is not good. <laughs> Thank y'all.
Chastity Campbell. The, she is going to be running for tax assessor collector. So I'm Chastity, and um, I was born and raised in Hopkins County. Some of you know me, some of you don't. And um, so I've, <clears throat> I've been working for the county for seven years, and I've been in the tax office for five years. And if you don't know anything about the tax office, we're four departments in one. And we do not only motor vehicle, but parks and wildlife. So if you have boat registration that needs to be done, come see us. We collect property tax, and we also do voter registration. So if anybody needs to register to vote or change their address, come see us. And that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Introduce one of the ones that's retiring. How are you doing, Miss Debbie? She doing <laughs> and Cheryl Fulter, our uh, district clerk, she's still here. And so Cheryl, I, I don't think there's any other elected officials here tonight. Down there, I'm. Oh, Joe is uh, Joe Price. All right, well, stand up. You're elected commissioner. Please <laughs> four. Uh, Greg Anglin, Commissioner Precinct 2. Uh, Wade Bartley is here. He's retired. And uh, sweet wife Jane. I don't want to forget her. And of course Mickey. And Mickey's running again. There you are, Mickey. And his wife Susie. I think I've got everybody. I always feel bad if you miss somebody. We've got a retired JP1 over here. Judge. <laughs> uh, Brad, did I see Brad come in? Hi, Brad. Uh, he's the current judge. <laughs> hey, I haven't seen BJ. He's probably out Dan there. Dan oh, Dan and Danny's here. Okay. Danny Davis, best for last. He's our county treasurer and our veteran service officer. <laughs> and they're telling me the truth when they say the county is the best place to work. It really is. It's a great group of people. I stayed for 20 years. Been gone eight. Got to tell you, don't miss it at all. I love the people, but I don't miss being in an elected office. So what we're going to do now is let the forum begin. I'm going to uh, tell you guys, and I hardly think I need to remind anybody in this office, but just in case, treat others as you would like to be treated. And uh, the candidates need to be respected for their desire to seek office. Whether you agree with them or not, let's just be respectful of everybody. And now I'm going to let Jim Thompson tell you guys, and, and he is a, was a treasurer. <laughs> And uh, so once you run for office and you're elected, you're here forever. Uh, but Jim is going to tell y'all how the system is going to work and what you can expect. And while he's talking, why don't the candidates for uh, Commissioner Precinct 1 come forward. Good evening, everybody. I'm really glad to see all of you here. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Precinct 1. That would be followed by Pre Commissioner Precinct 3. And then Constable Precinct 1 and then sheriff. So that's the order that we will go in on the races. Now this sounds complicated, but it's really not. So just listen up and I'm sure it'll work for you. For each race, beginning with Commissioner Precinct 1, the candidates will each have three minutes for an opening statement. Opening statement and closing statement will both be limited to three minutes. The speaking order was determined by a random draw for position that happened just a little bit ago. So it was completely random. There's no partiality being shown there. <clears throat> Opening statements will be done in the order of the position drawn, and then closing statements will be in the reverse order. That way nobody gets the first position all the time or the last position all the time. Uh, each candidate, when a question is asked, you will have two minutes to give your answer, up to two minutes. Whoever answered that question first will then have the right to a one-minute rebuttal. Now, here's where it gets just a wee little bit 
confusing if you don't listen carefully. Uh, in each race, and we've got four different races we're dealing with tonight, whoever drew the first position will be the first one to answer the first question. And then we progress through the system. So the second question that gets asked, the first person to answer it will be the one in position two. Make sense? And you just continue going around the circle when all of the uh, <coughs> contestants or, or, or candidates have been able to give an answer, then whoever answered it the first was the first position to answer it, they will get the rebuttal and then we'll move on to the next question. Um, that procedure will continue until no more questions for that race are asked and then we will move on in that race to the three minute closing statements. I have, anytime you're speaking, when you get down to where you only have 30 seconds left, I'm gonna be sitting right here, and I'll just hold this up so you'll know you gotta wrap up in, within 30 seconds. If you run all the way up to the full stop, you're gonna see a red one that says stop. It's really pretty simple. I've got a digital stopwatch on my phone. That's how I'm gonna be tracking it, so you know, there's really not much of a chance for me to mess up unless I go to sleep or something. So keep me awake with your answers and your rebuttals and we'll all uh, go down the path together real well. Thank you. Okay, uh, these are y'all's chairs. I'm trying to get y'all close where, or you stand and lean. I, I just want y'all close where we don't kill a lot of time sauntering back and forth. And uh, you'd be surprised how much time that can eat up. Okay, y'all are going to have the podium to lean against, or put a book on, or whatever y'all want to do. You're that lean in. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Thank you. I'm tired. It's been a long time. Uh, Mickey Barker is our first opponent, and he is the incumbent for Commissioner Precinct 1. Nice to have everybody here tonight. Very large crowd, and I appreciate it. I see most people. First of all, I want to introduce myself to those that do not know me. Oh, do we have to start over? <laughs> My name is Mickey Barker. I am currently the commissioner for Precinct 1 of Hopkins County. Uh, this is my second term. I'll be finishing up and I'll be running for my third term. I moved here in 1978. I'm not a hometown boy. I did marry a hometown girl, Susie Barker, back here. We've been married for 38 years. I uh, have six grandkids. One of them is here tonight, Miss Emma Amy. Stand up, please. Thank you. Uh, the only reason I pointed her out is that she's going to uh, college down at Austin, and uh, we're all very proud of her. She's a junior now. Anyway, uh, I retired from Verizon after 37 years. Uh, when I retired, I was an uh, area construction manager in this whole Northeast Texas area. <coughs> uh, some of the civic duties and civic organizations that I've been involved in, I was president of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I've been in the, um, I'm going to look at my notes here, uh, the planning and zoning Commission here in uh, uh, Hopkins uh, Supper Springs. Also on the Civic Center Rodeo Committee. I was there several years. Uh, Northeast Texas Rail, the Neetex Rail, a short line railroad. I was on that board for about three years. And presently I am the uh, on the water board at Bashir Water Line. <coughs> I've heard it said two or three times tonight that the people here in Hopkins County, the elected officials and the ones that all work together, work together very good, very easy. And that is true. I can't say that enough. Uh, I try not to look over here at the other commissioners because I'm, I'm afraid they're going to start laughing at me or smiling and making fun of me. But um, I'm also very proud that this commissioner's court is the first all-Republican 
uh, to Mr. Cool. Yeah. That's already 30 cents. Yeah, 30 cents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd put these others in my pocket. Uh, uh, I will continue to be your voice for Hopkins County. Thank you very much. My name is Wesley Miller. I'm running for Hopkins County Commissioner, Precinct 1. I'm a lifelong resident here of Hopkins County. I'm married to my wife for nine years. I have two beautiful children. And <clears throat> I've worked for Hopkins County for nine years, or going on nine years. And I've been the foreman for six of those years. I enjoy working on the roads, and I know how to build a county road, and I tend to the better Precinct One's roads. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to answering anybody's questions if you need. Um, this is my first time standing up. And thank you. <laughs> um, I've worked for Hopkins County and I, I grew up here and I enjoy working for Hopkins County and plan to serve for Hopkins County for many more years. Good evening. Obviously, I need to buy myself a cowboy hat and boots. But <laughs> uh, my name is Steve Smith. Uh, me and my wife own and operate uh, barbecue restaurant south of town. We've been there 34 years. I've been in this county 34 years. Uh, married to my wife Donna, 38 years. We have two children. Uh, been involved in several community activities and. and Volunteer fire departments in the county, and uh, I just uh, I just believe I can do what y'all need done. And uh, um, I think I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> okay, guys. I think y'all can see you've got three good people up here, and we're going to start with our questions. Mickey will answer first then Wesley, then Steve, and then Mickey will have his chance to rebuttal. The question, okay, what current policy of Hopkins County would you like to see changed, stay the same, or improved upon if you are elected? Just a quick one that came up before the court just yesterday, a matter of fact. I think that all county work crews should be considered as first responders. We are called upon day and night, weekends, cold weather, rainy weather, to come out and clear the road, clear the trees, clear the ice off the roads, and I think that policy should be changed. I mean, I'm kind of with Mickey on that, the first responders, because we are, I mean, we have to go out when the, when the trees are down and the roads are bad. And I agree with him on that. Well, I don't know a whole lot of the policies. I can't think of anything that needs to be changed or altered. I mean, I'm, I'm sure once I get involved, uh, I'll, I'll have a little more information and input, but right now I just I really don't have a whole lot. Thanks, Steve. Nikki, do you want to rebut? Oh, okay. So we'll go to Wesley, you're number first. Let's say Wesley, then Steve, then Mickey. What is your understanding of your position on Commissioner's Court 
and the authority the state of Texas gives to the court, what percentage of the job do you believe governing the county versus working the roads? sure for this because I haven't seen a lot of this um, but the percentage of I mean I think I think based on the numbers that we have here I think just as much time on the road as, as in the courtroom. So, I mean, 50-50, I would... Well, it's my understanding, I've talked to several, that the, uh, years ago, it was probably about 90% was, was uh, on the roads. Uh, I understand now that it's small fraction, maybe 20, 25% of it is road work, and the rest of it is in the courtroom, uh, uh, dealing with uh, civic matters and stuff. Um, but, you know, if you got a good crew out there, you really don't need to be out there that much if, if you got a good trusting crew out there to, to do what, what they say they're gonna do. But uh, I believe a lot of it is, uh, I believe 25% of it would be on the road. Unfortunately, that's what we're mainly voted on is the roads. Uh, people out in the county, they really don't have any idea what goes on in the courtroom of the county court. But all they see is the roads. The roads are bad, you're bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> over the last seven years that roads will probably be only about 20% of my job duties. The rest is dealing with your tax dollars. Uh, I think roughly $26 million that the county commissioners and county commissioners court is responsible for that we did the out to the 25 different departments throughout the county. But even though the roads only are 20% roughly, of my responsibility takes up about 80% of my time. Mm -hmm. We're constantly ordering material, even if we're not out on the roads, but I do go out on the roads every day with my crew at some point or another. And I work with them and uh, do the best we can to clear the roads, work on the roads, and uh, roughly about 20% of my time <laughs> okay, the next round goes Steve, Mickey, Wesley, Steve, unless I decide to forget somebody. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> Thank y'all. I don't mean to make mistakes. It just happens. Uh, here's a question. What would be your top three priorities when you enter the office? Top three priorities. Well, I guess the first one would be to uh, balance your budget, see where you're at, how much money you got, where it needs to go. And uh, second would be uh, checking out your roads and seeing what uh, 
which one needs attention first and, and more more so and um, the third gee I don't know yet <laughs> <laughs> Don Patterson told me one time, some of you know Don, he's the old road commissioner. He told me, I asked him, I said, Don, what do you have to do to please the people? And we were having coffee together and he leaned back in his chair like he always did and put his hat on the back of his head. He leaned forward, I leaned forward. This young boy is fixing to get all the information and everything he ever needed. He says, Mickey, all you got to do is fix those potholes. <laughs> I did the same thing. I giggled on the inside. But I still bought his coffee. Six months into being a commissioner, I realized that old commissioner was 100% right. That's the main thing that most all people out in the county care about. That pothole is what they see every day when they go to school, go to church, go to work. Anytime they leave to go to town, they see that pothole. They don't care about the ditches, the trees. They really don't care about how I'm spending the tax dollars. Now, I got away from the original question. What was it? <laughs> Number one is I'm going to fix that pothole. <laughs> and of course, there's always things that we need to do to address issues on the budget. Uh, without going into a lot of details, there's a lot of issues that we discuss as commissioners in work session. Sometimes we argue and cuss each other a little bit, but we normally always agree or come to an understanding. Sorry. I'll answer the third question later. Okay, <laughs> okay guys, this, we're going to let them hunt the barber. Uh, the, uh, we're going to do our closing statements. You got one more guy. Thank y'all. The barber blew my mind. She stuck in. <laughs> What are your top three priorities? In other words, top three things, first three things you do when you came into office. Well, the first thing I'd have to see what the budget was like, <clears throat> but the second thing would be would, would be the roads. And to be able to fix the roads, you're going to have to fix the drainage, and the brush, and the shredding to make sure that the, the water will drain off the roads to, to fix the potholes. The potholes are going to continue to come as long as the, the water stands in the road and the ditches don't drain. Um, I guess the potholes and fixing the road was my second. The first was the budget. <clears throat> and the third thing was communicating with the people to, to see what something that I may not see or that they could help me with. Thank you guys. Uh, we've got three good candidates and they're going to give their closing statements. First Steve, then Wesley, then Mickey. Got three minutes. Give me an extra seven. <laughs> well in closing I'd just like to uh, thank everybody for coming out and uh, uh, just uh, well, gee whiz, I don't know what I'm going to say. But, uh, just, you know, I'll, 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 do, I'll do the best I can. I'm sure I've got a lot to learn. And, uh, but I'm not too old to learn. I, I can still learn. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you for your time and appreciate it. Again, I would like to thank everyone for coming and giving me the opportunity to speak. <clears throat> Hopefully some of the questions were answered that <laughs> we were asked. But um, 
like I said, I've worked for Precinct 3 for going on nine years, and I have the experience of building roads, and I would take that with me if I was elected for Precinct 1. Thank you. County commissioner's job should not be taken lightly. We cannot accomplish everything that we set out to do. I have over 216 miles of road, and that's going to be 432 miles of ditches, trees, culverts, and other things besides the road. Uh, it takes roughly roughly, very roughly, $100,000 to redo a mile of road, depending on the procedure or the type process that you use. There's not enough money for all that. We do the best that we can with what we have. And my three phones that I have ring off the wall 24 hours a day. People wanting that pothole fixed. <clears throat> that I cannot do right now. So, uh, <clears throat> another thing, uh, Precinct 1, we have suffered most of all the damage or several damages due to tornadoes, high winds, and the big freeze of 2021, and we're still cleaning up from that. But my guys, my employees were out there those next two days working day and night clearing off the roads. We were called in by TxDOT to bring our motor graders in to clear the ice off the roads. So we're very well, the employees do not get the respect that they should. You don't see them, you might see them fixing your pothole, but you don't see them when they're out there at two o'clock in the morning in the icy cold weather cutting up that hackberry tree. <coughs> I hate hackberries. <laughs> but um, I give all the respect to my employees and I push them pretty hard. Thank you very much. Okay, let's have our next group of candidates come up here. They're for Commissioner's Precinct 2, 3. Can we go on there? No, y'all gotta stay. Y'all gotta stay. Y'all just thought y'all's questions were tough. Wait till you see what I did. Precinct three. Okay, we're gonna have uh, Travis goes first, Bill goes second, and Lance will go third on their opening statements. Here you go, Travis. I'm Travis Thompson. I'm running for Commissioner of Precinct 3. I want to thank everybody in here for coming out and seeing us tonight, letting us speak in front of y'all. Uh, if y'all do have any questions, please pull us to the side at the end. Ask us in person if you want to, or give us a call on the phone or send a message on Facebook. Uh, I've been working in county work for the last seven and a half years on a road crew. I've been over a road crew for the last five and I come out of eight years in the coal mine before that, building roads and maintaining and working on equipment. And I'm here to run against two great guys that I think are good people, but it's still gonna come to a runoff. Thanks. <laughs> I can follow that. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is William Holden. Most people call me Bill, my grandkids call me Bull. Throughout my career, I have worked as a butcher, a maintenance supervisor, and a business owner. These jobs have given me the skills to manage staff, budgets, and yes, expectations. As you can see, everything I've ever done was and is for the servitude of people. My experience has taught me one of the greatest things ever in life is the servitude of Christ our Savior, as well as my fellow Texans. As your county commissioner, you will get wisdom in preparing and maintaining the budget, as well as working with the team on maintaining the roads, the ditches, and yes, the blind corners. Heard a lot about that. 
You will also get maturity, as I am well seasoned in business and managing a $3 million plus budget, along with maturity. You will receive faithfulness as well as passion, as I'm very passionate about everything I do. You can ask any one of the 27 employees that work for BT Bank. I don't want to throw that out there, but it's been brought up. I am elected, I will maintain the partnership in BT Medical, as I have more than enough staff that have been hired over the last two years preparing for running for this, as I was going to run three years ago. Um, I'm very excited about this, and I do want everyone to know that I intend to be a full-time county commissioner, not a part-time, I'm not going to be up at BT Medical working. I do have other interests in life besides work. I attend church at Shannon Oaks Church, and I enjoy raising a few cattle and doing camping with my wife, Kathy, who is here tonight with me. I also have quite a few family here, and I thank you all and friends for coming. As a Hobson County resident for 30 plus years, I'm asking for your vote for county commissioner for precinct three. Thank you. Lance Knotts, um, running for Hopkins County Precinct 3 Commissioner, if you hadn't figured that out. I'm a fifth generation Hopkins County farming family. Um, I'm the son of a rural mail carrier. My father carried the mail for 37 years, and my mother taught public school for over 20. So we, we serve the public and our family. We know what that means and what it looks like. I'm a 2007 graduate of Sulphur Springs High School. My experience includes, but is not limited to, knowing farm equipment, farm operations. Uh, a great deal of my life, we were recovering from the dairy business. So, budget's a big deal, and we know how to operate on what's available. Uh, I spent several years as a field supervisor over a crew that was tasked with deforestation of the 183 highway extension in Irving, Texas. Uh, that entailed maintaining equipment and working with all walks of people to get the job done the way that they wanted it done. Um, so I'm familiar with the equipment and uh, how, to, how to operate with a crew and give direction and take direction. So have some familiarity with that. I believe in fiscal responsibility, but not to the point of being stingy with the departments that need funding. So if we see a need, we should fill it without being reckless. Um, in closing, I guess I would say that kindness doesn't cost us anything. And a great deal of the problems that people bring to you can be addressed with kindness, and everybody can walk away feeling good. Thank you. Okay, we have our first question, and the first one up is Travis, then Bill, then Lance. And then Travis will have a chance to um, rebut. Explain your knowledge of the partnership that exists between Hopkins County and the volunteer fire departments and the funding available to the VFDs. <clears throat> partnership with the fire departments. <coughs> volunteer fire departments. They are our first responders any kind of fire or wreck or anything, they are the first ones on the scene. They are not paid, but they are well determined to do their job that they don't get paid for. Most, they are good at what they do. Doesn't matter the weather, what time it is, they show up. And I feel like they should be supported as far as we can with what limited money we have that we can give to them. If y'all need me to re-ask it, I'll be happy to. Would you please ask one more time? Okay. Explain your knowledge 
of the partnership that exists between Hopkins County and the volunteer fire departments and the funding <coughs> that is available to them. I guess I feel the same way about that as I do the Sheriff's Department and anybody that does work in volunteer work. Um, there's a need for funding, obviously, and we need to support these, not just by thanking them, but there should be funds also for that. Uh, I know Andy Angeli does a tremendous job. Uh, all of our volunteer people do a tremendous job, but I am very thankful for the volunteer fire departments that we have all around Hopkins County because anybody here has seen a fire, you don't just see those people that are closest. At least two others will respond to that fire. So I'm thankful for them. I support them 100% and I feel like they should have more funding. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Through this process, I've had the opportunity to go to the county fire chiefs meetings. And uh, a lot of people show up. It's not just the chiefs. It's a lot of members of every volunteer department. They are a totally committed group of people who really believe in the help that they're providing the community. <clears throat> so with that being said, I don't have a great familiarity with the, the budget or the funds that are available for the volunteers. But I can say that more <coughs> would be helpful. And there's got to be a way to find more funding for these guys. Because they, they truly are, like they said, the first responders. And they have no obligation to come. They choose to come. They choose to go train. So any way at all that the county can lift them up <coughs> and support them in any way, I believe that should be done. Thank you. Bill, you'll go first, then Lance, then Travis. Explain the unit road system and your opinion of the viability of Hopkins County transitioning <coughs> to this method of county road maintenance construction. Well, I obviously don't have as much experience in building roads as one of our opponents up here. Uh, but I do have the knowledge of bending the ears of the past commissioners uh, that have worked here the last few years, uh, probably the past 20 years. Um, Don being one for sure. I can't say as to the way they're building the roads are correct or incorrect, but I can say that they have a, such a minute amount of the tax money that's used for those roads. I think it's around 15 cents per dollar, from what I understand. And to take that amount and have to use it to fix the roads, obviously when, when they fix a road, they don't just always tear it all the way up and, and replace it with brand new stuff. They, they reclaim it, they overlay it, or they replace it completely, which is very, I doubt there's none being replaced in this county right now because they don't have the funds to do it. You can't spend a million dollars. You don't have those kind of funds. So, I don't know, is there a different way to build the roads? I don't know. But I can assure you that I will put my best foot forward and I will look at every way that it's being done and I will work with the other commissioners doing everything as far as building the roads or finding a better way to do it. If there is a better way, I'm not saying there is because I don't know. But I do say that if you work together, there's ways to do power buys and there's ways to buy larger amounts in bulk, I would think. That's my opinion. Well, I think obviously you're going to get your best answer last. Travis has all the experience building roads. There's no doubt about that. I don't know. It would just have to be something we got into. I mean, there's systems that we've used for years. There's systems that we stopped using. Maybe they're viable again. 
Maybe not. Uh, I would get up here and start talking about things I have no authority to be talking about. So, uh, but I, I am with Bill. Every, every avenue should be explored. There's always a way to do it better, more affordable, and it will last longer for our people. Thank you. Opinion on the <coughs> system. <coughs> right now, you've got four commissioners that's over their own precinct. You go to a unit system, you're going to combine everybody to go under one person. An engineer who's going to have control over over 800 miles of county road. And my opinion, if you think the unit system is good, look at Titus County. Titus County went to a unit system and sold over half their equipment. Now they have to go back like it was and try to replace stuff to go back to the <coughs> roads instead of letting the commissioners handle their precinct that they're over. Thank you. And this is our last question. Lance will go first, then Travis, then Bill. County business is a big business and requires a lot of budgeting. What experience have you had in this line of management? Well, I don't own a business. I've never managed the amount of money that will be managed in this position. But I have only ever worked for small businesses. And if I know a lot of you own small businesses, budgets are a big deal. And you got to stick to it. And you have to have an understanding of how much is going out versus how much you can bring in. All of these things. So, uh, it is big business. And it's an even bigger responsibility because it's not my money. It's the community's money. And it should be used for the betterment of everybody. So, you know, the way that the funds are distributed... <coughs> And the way that the materials are utilized and put back into the community is a very big deal. And the only way we can work on doing it better is through community input, working with the other commissioners, working with the other departmental heads in the county. And those are a lot of voices. But through listening and reasonable conversation, we can work through it. Thank you. requires a lot of budgeting. What experience have you had in this line of management? In a line of budgeting, um, I am not as aged as some others. <laughs> but I can say that uh, personally owned my house, my farm equipment, and vehicles since I was 27. I'm not one to go in debt. If you can't make it manage with what you got, then you don't have it. And if I can deal with what I make working for a county and pay off what I own now, then I think I would be a great commissioner. Because you don't have unlimited funds. And we do what we can do. Thank you. I guess I'm the one that's long in the tooth up here. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. I guess budget's my thing, uh, but I don't want to set up and brag because a three and a half million dollar budget is not something to brag about. Because we have to fight for that, dealing with the healthcare system and dealing with the insurances. Everybody here that is getting long in the tooth understands that when you get close to Medicare and anybody that deals with Social Security. Um, I am well versed in that and I've, I've fought the fight and I've fought it for the last 16 years. Um, but I've always preached to the employees that work with me every day that you have to make three times what your salary is. 
and this is kind of on the lines of budget, but you want, one has to be for what it costs for the product. One has to be to cover the cost of the employee. One has to be for profit. In this type of business, you're not using my money to do this. We're using the county's money. We have a limited fund. But you got to know cost versus return. Thank you. Okay, they're going to all do a closing statement. Lance will go first, then Bill, and then Travis. Well, I appreciate everybody that came out tonight. I appreciate the Bright Star Republican women for hosting this. Uh, I get to come to a lot of these meetings. My beautiful wife, Casey, 13 years as the secretary, so I get to see how it comes together, and it's an incredible group of women that can really get things done. But I hope that some of the things we said made sense. I hope that you have a better understanding of, of who's running. And uh, I just want to say that I love this county. Um, I'll never be anywhere else. So I would appreciate the opportunity to at least be considered. Thank you. I too would like to thank everyone for coming. And I thank my family and friends for showing up. Um, I've been putting in the time to do this job. I really have. I've done, I've done a lot of things to put this in place. And like I said in my opening, I am very passionate about what I do. And those that know you, me and have worked with me over the years, you know that I don't mind working 16, 18 hours a day. My wife will tell you real quick that I'm a workaholic. I am. I'm not going to do that. But I assure you that I am the best candidate standing up here to help this county work together, not be fighting over the solar farms, and help put our community back together. Not that it's broken, it's just that people are not understanding. I, I will be transparent, that I assure you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming out, listening to us. Uh, I'm sure all of us up here think we're the best candidate for the job. I'm here running because I've got the experience. I've got the know-how to do the roads. I've got the know-how to work on budgets and help. I've been a team player since I've been in working for the county that I work for now. And I want to bring that over here. I'm not saying that we don't have team players over here, but it's always great to add on to a team and make it stronger, make it better. And I feel like if I can get in, then I can work with the commissioners that we have in now, or the ones that we will have in, and I think it'd be a great job. And I've lived here my whole life. My wife has lived here in Precinct 3 with me her whole life. I've grown up here, and I plan to stay here, whether it's working for Hopkins County or Franklin County. So I'm going to use my experience and run on experience. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Our next race is the Constable race, Constable Precinct 1. Uh, Dennis and Chris, will y'all come to the front? Well, they're coming up here. I want to invite everybody to the Hopkins County President's Day Forum on February the 19th. It will be out at the Civic Center. The tickets are $25 a piece. You will hear these gentlemen again, plus different questions. Plus, there'll be state candidates. There'll be district candidates. This is it's a very large event. And so, uh, y'all please put that on your calendar, February the 19th. You missed, there will also be barbecue. Uh, that's right, there'll be barbecue, and it's Andy Wright's barbecue. For those of y'all that haven't had that, it's so good. I love those sweet I have tickets. I can go and win me tonight. Oh. You can get your tickets from me. Jim said catch him. He's got his tickets to sell. So you guys come. 
Okay, uh, we've got opening statements. Dennis Finley will go first, and then Chris Hill. Thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate this large crowd. Uh, I do ask that you pray for Debbie and my wife for a quick recovery for both of them. My name is Dennis Finley, and I am seeking the office of Constable Precinct 1. Many years ago, the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office delivered civil process throughout the county. This time went on, that responsibility was later transferred over to the county constable's office where it is today. <coughs> I have a great deal of respect for those who have served as constable here in Hopkins County. Men like retiring constable Norman Collier and the late Roger Tex Maynard. I'm running for the office to continue the legacy by these constables and stand upon the shoulders of those who came before them, but more importantly, to serve my community as your constable. A little bit about myself. I've spent 28 years in law enforcement, 25 of those years serving Sulphur Springs in Hopkins County. I started with the Sulphur Springs Police Department, and for the last 22 years I've been with the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office, and I'm a Sergeant Investigator assigned to the Criminal Investigation Division. I have over 3,000 hours of in-service training and hold many other t call certificates. I'm a t call instructor, I'm a hostage negotiator, I'm court security certified, and I am a Master Peace Officer. I've had the privilege of working under five sheriffs in Hopkins County, C.W. Grayson, Mark Bassam, Billy Dirks, Butch Adams, and current Sheriff Lewis Tatum. I've learned a great deal from each of these professional, hardworking men. Community service is also important to me. I have served as board member with the Architects Council of Government. I've served as coordinator and board member of Crime Stoppers Program. For the last 18 years, I've assisted uh, with the uh, Blue Santa Program. I've served as board member with the Fall Festival Board, and currently I serve on the Civic Center Board. My wife and I, Melanie, have been married for 33 years. We have three children. All attended the Sulphur Springs Independent School District and all graduated from the Kilgore Police Academy. We have five uh, grandchildren, and thus far, that's the best job she and I has ever had. We have lived in Hopkins County 40 years, primarily in the Precinct 1 District. We are members of the first, I'm present, the members of the Central Baptist Church. It is our home. I appreciate your time and your attention, and would greatly appreciate your vote in the March 2024 primary. Thank you, God bless you. Well, first of all, I want to have to ask for uh, uh, some understanding. I've come down with some some kind of stuff that makes me sound like Wolfman Jack up here. So I apologize, first of all, about that. But I'll talk as long as uh, my voice lets me or, or the until he shows me the yellow card. Uh, thanks so much for the, the turnout tonight uh, for so many people that are interested uh, in the county and in the public offices uh, of the county. Uh, my name is Chris Hill, and uh, I was born and raised here in Hopkins County. I was born on a dairy, raised on a dairy in Pine Forest, Texas. Uh, my dad, the late Harold Hill, had it, uh, and um, I was raised like any uh, any guy that was raised in the 70s or born in the 70s was on a dairy. You got up early, you worked hard, you went to school, you got home, you had a little bit of time to watch. Sanford and Son ate a bowl of cereal before you went back to the back to the barn to work some more. Uh, then you went and did your homework and went home. Um, I have uh, been married for 14 years. I've got five children, uh, seven grandchildren. I've got uh, the majority of those here tonight, uh, the kids and stuff anyway. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and a couple of granddaughters I do have back there. Being pretty good. I'm, quite surprised but um i have uh 20 let's say this year i believe begin uh, i'm sorry this month begins my 27th uh year of, of law enforcement experience um i started back in 96 sheriff butch adams is that correct yeah what he said, January, uh, and uh, started there as a deputy, and uh, worked there for just under 10 years, and uh, 
I worked my way up to uh, environmental investigator there. I was on the SWAT team for nine years. Uh, was um, uh, wrote a lot of grants, and uh, that's one thing that I, I want to try to bring to this office is uh, my rent, my grant writing skills. I want to try to write as many grants as I can to try to save the taxpayers' money in this position. Um, most recently, I was the uh, captain at Winsboro Police Department, uh, where I oversaw dispatch, uh, budgeting, everything pretty much over there. I have uh, my master peace officer, firearms uh, instructor, a T call instructor, and uh, I'm so glad y'all were able to be here tonight, and I look forward to answering any questions y'all have. First question, Dennis, you'll go first. Chris, you're second. And Dennis, if you want to do a rebuttal, you can. Okay, the question is, Hopkins County Constables operate a single person office. What makes you most qualified to ensure the office is run effectively and efficiently without the benefit of an employee? For the last... 40 something years that I'm aware of, the constable's office has been a one man band. If they can do it for the last 40 years, why can't I do it now? Our current situation is that uh, they handle all the civil process that goes through the, in the county. Um, again, I'm on the outside looking in, so I feel like if they can do it for the last 40 years, I can do the same, same job as well. Well, being from Hopkins County, the majority of my life, um, it's not a huge county, it's not a small county, it's kind of in the middle. And um, I believe as a constable in Hopkins County, uh, you have to be well-rounded, well-versed. Uh, you need to be able to uh, do the courtroom security, you need to be able to serve the civil process, serve the warrants as needs to be, as well as primarily cooperate with the other agencies, assist them, and uh, serve the public. Uh, and that's the primary thing is public service. That, that's what uh, officers are, are, are supposed to protect and serve, and, and that's what I want to put in there is the serve part of that protect and serve. For that to be done, you have to be well-rounded to run a department by yourself. You have to be able to budget. You have to be able to know how to write grants. You have to have some knowledge of the, um, the administrative part of it as well as take out your own garbage. That's what you have to do. I started from the bottom and I've worked the way up to the rank of captain where I did the budgeting, I did the administration part. Uh, I've got my degree from Columbia Southern University. Uh, I went to uh, Lehman Leadership Command College, uh, which is an elite program that only about 3% of Texas peace officers are accepted into and complete. Um, in that is for uh, basically doing just that and well rounding an officer. Uh, or an administrator to do that. So, from taking out the trash to setting up your budget and uh, being that type of leader, I believe I have those skills and have proven that over the last 27 years. Our second question, and Chris will go first, then Dennis. This one's kind of long, but I think you'll figure it. Constables have the inevitable and difficult responsibility of taking away property and even children from those who have found themselves at the receiving end of a court order or judgment. How are you prepared to deal with the sensitive and unpredictable encounters with individuals who may consider this the most vulnerable and trying times in their lives? Well, that's, whoever wrote this, very, very good question. Um, one of the classes that I teach, I'm a certified mental health peace officer as well, uh, and one of the classes I teach is crisis intervention training, which was a mandated course that TCO handed down a few years ago. It's a 40-hour course that's required by all peace officers. Uh, and crisis intervention training teaches how, teaches, in that class, I teach officers how to deal with uh, people like this, whether that is from suffering from some kind of uh, disability or whether when you pull somebody over on the side of the road, whether they have a, uh, some, type of, some type 
of disorder, mental disorder, or whether they just lost their beloved puppy. They're in distress. Uh, they, they are in crisis at that point. You have to know how to deal with that. My primary goal as an elected official of Hopkins County is to serve the public. That's the bottom line, period. And that doesn't matter if you're the person that was just being evicted from a home or if a person that has fallen on some hard times and have just had your child removed away from you. My job is to do that, to do those papers, to execute those papers that the judge signed off on to the best of my ability. Uh, I will do that. And that is possible to be able to do that while being the most humble person and trying to give the person that is on the receiving end of that, trying to give them uh, some kind of humility uh, and not trying to, to speak down to them or anything. So uh, with my training on that, I think I'm fully qualified to be able to do that. And um, that's, that's what I signed up for when I signed up for this position. Investigator at the Sheriff's Office. I've had the opportunity to interview hundreds of people from all walks of life. I'm a parent, I've got children. It's difficult when you take a child away from, from a parent. I can only imagine how I would feel if it happened to me. But I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. That's, that's the first and foremost. Secondly, I'm going to be compassionate, I'm going to be understanding, I'm going to try to teach, tell that individual it's going to be okay. There's a way and a process to go about getting your life back together. And if I can do that in any way, I'm going to, I'm going to do that, besides doing my job. Uh, that's important to me because, again, I have children, and it's, it's difficult for them. And I'll, I'll make it short. This is the last question. Uh, Dennis will go first, then Chris. Stray dogs are an issue in the county. Do you see the Office of Constable being able to intervene with this issue and help the rural population have a solution to protect themselves other than relocating the animal themselves? This is a very sensitive uh, issue that we have in the county. I can assure you our sheriff, as well as our county government, has had multiple conversations about this situation. We simply don't have the money to deal with a pound or any other uh, assistance. It takes millions of dollars to put a, a, a facility together, purchasing a land, building, employees, equipment, vehicles, etc. Um, every one of them would love to do something to help that particular situation, because it is a very sensitive situation. But the bottom line is, is the county doesn't have the money for that. And we don't have city, we don't have county ordinances either, so we're not required to have a city pound. So with that being said, that's the best we can do at this point in time. This is one thing that I've, I've heard from uh, people that have contacted me have, have shown interest and, and concern with this. Um, I have supervised animal control officers. I've went to some animal control training. Um, while uh, there isn't anything in place right now to do this, uh, with the uh, combined experience, knowledge, and intelligence of the leaders of Hopkins County, I feel, I feel free, feel sure that we could come up with some type of solution. It may not be the best thing out there, but I think it'll be better than probably what it is now. Uh, like I say, let's go back to grants. Uh, let's face it, animal lovers are some of the uh, most devoted and uh, giving people out there when it comes down to it. Uh, you don't have to hear a lady uh, 
what singer is that that's singing on that advertisement watching a, a puppy starve to death to send in some money. Give some of that to us. Uh, I can put out some grants for that, see some grants. Is it going to be building a shelter? I don't know. Is it going to be forming a partnership with a nearby shelter or something? I'm not sure. But there is a solution out there somewhere, and that's something that I look at getting with some of the great minds of Hopkins County and, and solving. I have animals, I have dogs, cats, myself. It is a very sensitive situation. Our county government has done everything thus far to address this matter uh, with not only the, you know, within the county, but as well as with us citizens in our county. Um, I got nervous. <laughs> uh, I'm getting old. Thank you. That's okay, Dennis. We can all beat the alternative. We're going to have closing statements now. Chris will go first. Well, thank you all uh, again so much for coming out and taking part in this. Uh, you don't know how much that means to all of us that are here, even those that are running unopposed, um, to have this kind of turnout and this kind of interest. Um, I've spoken several times throughout uh, the questioning and everything about uh, writing grants, and uh, that was something uh, when I did work uh, for Sheriff Butch Adams. Uh, there wasn't a lot of money in the budget for different things, and I was like, we've got to figure out something. I was just a young pup, had no idea when to talk, when not to, when to shut up and stuff like that, but I figured I was going to, I've got to do something here, I've got to figure something out. This isn't a, uh, a solution just to say we ain't got the money and that's what I did I looked at several different grants uh, I got the first thermal imager for the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office I got the first mobile thermal imager for the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office um, solicited funds and things and got uh, a drug dog and a vehicle and everything for the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office this was back in 2098 through 03 or 04 um, uh, wrote some grants for uh, some additional officers. This is with no grant training whatsoever. This is just a dumb old boy raised up on a dairy getting on a computer that was kind of new back then and saying, hey, this is what we need and this is why we need it. Have some mercy on us. And they did. I later on, later on ended up getting appointed to the board at the Architects Council of Governments that approved grants uh, before I left here. Um, so, uh, since then, I've wrote just under a half, just under half a million dollars worth of grants that have been received in uh, over the last 20-something years. Now, that don't seem like a whole lot, but that is just purely law enforcement stuff. And uh, over 350,000 of that was no money matching grants. That was just a pure out gift. You just got to do what we tell you to do with it. That's what I plan on bringing to Hopkins County, that kind of leadership and that kind of fiscal responsibility. The office of the constable is a small office. When, when I first made the announcement that I wanted to run, uh, people was like, well, I'm glad we're getting somebody in there. I've got potholes. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to explain the difference between constable and commissioner. Oh, well, good luck to you. <laughs> and that was it. So um, uh, I do want to serve. Uh, like I say, I have uh, been a lifelong member of Hopkins County. I've been in law enforcement for uh, right at 27 years now, and I'm Chris Hill, and I'm asking for your vote for Constable Precinct 1, Hopkins County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to also thank my opponent, as well as Beth, for the questions. I'd also like to thank the Bright Star Republican Women for hosting this event. They put a lot of work into this, and it shows we're all here. We're, we're, we're concerned about our future here in Hopkins County. Um, I started this journey two years ago, and I've never looked back. If elected as constable, I will not only fulfill the duties of constable, but I'm also going to work as an extension to the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office, the Sulphur Springs Police Department, the Texas and Southwest Cattle Rangers Association, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and the Texas Department of Public Safety. They're shorthanded just as, as well as we are, but if I'm available, I'm going to be an extension of their office. Um, 
I may not do what is popular, but I will always do what is fair and what is right. I appreciate, uh, as we approach the March 5th primary, I ask you for your continued support and vote as Constable of Precinct. Yay. Thank you. God bless you. Yay. Thank you, guys. Um, sheriff candidates, can y'all come up? JP, do you like to be referred to as JP, or is it? Oh, <laughs> okay. And uh, Sheriff Tatum, Lewis? Guys, we're blessed. We've got some really good candidates up here tonight. I appreciate everybody. Okay, Lewis goes first, and then JP. First of all, thank you all tonight. Uh, my name is Lewis Tatum. I am your current sheriff. Um, if any of y'all know me, I am a heck of a politician, a heck of a public speaker. <laughs> uh, you know I'm lying there. But uh, I've been with, uh, I joined the posse in 89, um, and um, I went to work full-time for Sheriff Butch Adams. I appreciate you giving me the chance in 99. And I've been here my whole career, right here in Hopkins County. And one of the people I've watched and, um, and learned from was Tony Hurley. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, a couple things I want to go over, and I'll, I'll probably jump around, was, uh, you know, one thing I noticed that uh, Butch struggled with, Tony, they would train our officers, and our officers would leave for more money. And we fought that, and we fought that, and we fought that. But um, we, and we had some wonderful officers, and, and, and right now, um, I am humbled by the staff we have and the officers we have at Hopkins County Sheriff's Office. But... One thing that we started off with was, um, for example, in 2003, we had 382 reportable crimes. That's crimes against a person in Hopkins County. In 2000, and let me back up. The crime rates are raising everywhere, going up everywhere. So this is what I want to tell you about you're lucky to live in Hopkins County. Like in 2003, we had 382 reportable crimes, crimes against a person. In 2022, we had 124. Our crime rate was way up. <laughs> One reason it went down in 2022, and then I could go back, but I don't have enough time, was we had 350 self-initiated cases where officers went out and made a case themselves, stopped the car, found the drugs, or whatever they're arresting the people for, and that is unheard of. 350 cases they filed in one year. So, um, it, and the majority of those are drug related. Um, and when we get back to losing our officers, we constantly lost our officers. I was talking to Chief Tanner Crump, who I could never do without a few minutes ago, and we can't tell you the last time we had an officer leave our department for um, more pay. And the reason being is my mom, yeah, I've been going, I've been going. <laughs> and, 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 how, and how we did this was, how we did this was, and I, I'll go over some more of this in a minute. We started a program with the U.S. Marshals, housing U.S. Marshals in our jail. So far, we have made $3,800,000 and put back into the county budget. On, on the, uh, we, then we uh, started selling our own commissary. Talk about a hard act to follow. You bet. Well, I'm J.P. Mosley. I'm running for a sheriff, Hopkins County, not because I'm running against Lewis Tatum, but because I'm running for Hopkins County. Uh, started out as a Hopkins County paramedic <coughs> way back in the day. I think we had two ambulances, and now they, they're in like three or four counties. Um, enjoyed that. Went to the police academy in Kilgore with Chris Hill. Where are you? My roommate uh, in the police academy. And I uh, worked my way up as a reserve officer with Hopkins County, I mean, with uh, Surface Springs Police Department. Through patrol, I was on SWAT, narcotics, I was a canine officer, I was a dive, uh, rescue diver back when we had a rescue dive team. 
Um, and finally, made sergeant with the Tactical Narcotics Teams Task Force. And uh, had a great time doing that. Running up and down the interstate, chasing drugs, having fun. And uh, I, got a, I got a little, little tickle. I wanted to try the Fed system out. So I spent 21 years with uh, Homeland Security Investigations. I retired as a supervisory special agent. I was lucky enough to, to travel all across the nation. And I want to thank my family that's here with me because they traveled with me. And I pulled my kids out of countless schools uh, to go to a new location. And ended up as a supervisory special agent in Washington, D.C. and could not get out of there fast enough. I'll tell you that much right now. Then I went to Memphis, and I was over 23 um, counties in western Memphis. That meant 23 sheriffs that I worked with. And I was the guy that approved the, the grants that they wrote. And so I got to see exactly what was going on uh, in western Tennessee. Then I went to Texarkana, Arkansas, and I was over 19 counties in southern Arkansas. And did the same thing. Worked with state and local, worked with the sheriffs, worked with the various state agencies. And um, had a blast. And then I retired and decided to run for sheriff. And so that's why I'm here today. I will be a transparent sheriff. I will be accountable for my actions. I want to create a pinnacle law enforcement agency. And whenever I say something that I want to do, I am not taking anything away from the hard work that Sheriff Taylor has done. Just saying what I will do. And I just really want, um, want everyone to know that I grew up in Hopkins County. I graduated from Columbia High School in 1986. Joined the Navy at 17. Um, came back, got my bachelor's degree from Texas A&M in Commerce. And uh, I'm a master peace officer in the state of Texas. A firearms instructor and a classroom instructor. So thank you guys very much. Our first question, and it will be Lewis and then JP. How will the candidates respond to increasing internet, cyber crimes like fraud, identity theft, social media attacks, and human trafficking and smuggling? I'll read it again if you need it. Well, thank you for the question because that was one of my deals I wanted to talk about. And way down here, I'm like, I to We currently uh, are a member of the FBI task force for uh, child exploitation and human trafficking. And um, we have an officer here that works hand in hand with them and the Secret Service about this issue. And just to tell you, for one thing we've done was uh, we had a girl that was being human trafficked. She was headed to Wyoming. Corley Weatherford got on it and got her shut down and stopped in Amarillo. The guy is now pleading out in federal court in about a week, and he will be sentenced for doing that. But uh, we have a lab there in our office. It's constantly being monitored for, for child pornography. We work cases all over. Corley is going everywhere, along with the other officers helping him. He's training these officers how to do that. We do uh, stings all the time. We're constantly trying to uh, monitor the internet and try to help people. We try to tell people these are scams. And I, I don't care how much you tell them, some people will still fall for them. As a supervisor special agent for the Department of Homeland Security and Homeland Security Investigations, my job was to oversee cyber criminals, cyber investigations, human smuggling, human trafficking, weapons trafficking, money smuggling, narcotic smuggling, and on and on. What we saw around 2010 is that no matter what the crime is, it has an internet action. You take the dark web, someone ordering um, fentanyl from China, being delivered through FedEx 
to your house in three days. Law enforcement has a hard time reacting in three days with an international shipment. So what we've done is we've developed relationships with FedEx, UPS, countless law enforcement agencies, DEA, FBI, Homeland Security Investigations, and what we've done is um, try to be proactive instead of reactive. Because with carfentanil, a gram's enough to kill everybody in this room. And kudos to the sheriff for his latest arrest on a tragedy that happened here in Hopkins County. That's what I'm trying to, trying to stop. What I want to do is be proactive, forward-looking, not where we are today, because what we're dealing with today, we can't change. Where will we be in three years, five years, and ten years? Especially with the internet. Internet's growing faster than we can we can um, track it. Um, down to 30 seconds already. This is a good question, though. So human smuggling, human trafficking, I work those cases. And when you open a um, semi-trailer door in Dallas, Texas, in the heat of the summer, and you have 30 dead bodies from um, individuals that are being smuggling, it hits home. It does. And you can't, you can't wash that off. So the um, internet crimes, they're here to stay. And training is my biggest um, platform. Thank you. Did you read my campaign? Uh, transparency is uh, transparency, accountability, um, openness. I want to manage your expectations on what to expect from your sheriff. I don't want to set my expectations. I want to manage your expectations. I can do that through transparency. I can do that through accountability. Uh, some of the transparencies that I would like to see implemented if I'm elected is what are, what are the number of stops that we make in a day or a month? They have a very, very good um, internet site, website, but how can we share the information so that the citizens, you of Hopkins County, don't have to ask the question? Because whenever we, we ask a question we don't know the answer to, generally we go to the worst case scenario, and it's not always the worst case scenario. So transparency, um, meetings, press releases, internet sites that show the information, those are the ways that I want to establish transparency and meet the expectation of the citizens of Hopkins County yes. and what to expect from the sheriff. Yes. Well, if anyone knows our, our office and how we operate, um, anybody comes down and wants to know anything, we are transparent. We let them know everything. We've never hidden anything. I've arrested my own officers, and the first thing I did was put it to the public, put it out in the media, and let them know what I've done and what they've done. Because uh, if you just try to kick it on, down the road and let them resign, uh, it's just another uh, pain in the butt for another agency, really. So you need to be transparent. Uh, we've never <laughs> hidden anything. Uh, if anybody wants to know anything, we, we definitely will let them know. Uh, we'll show them whatever they want. They want to come down to the office if it's within the law. Tanner Crump runs, uh, and some more people run our social media. Anything that's going out, anything we can help the public with, we put it out there. We always try to, uh, well, I answer my phone 24 hours, 7 days a week. If you call me, I'm, I'm going to answer your phone. If I'm asleep, I'll wake up and answer your phone. I will do anything I can to help the citizens of Hopkins County, and I think we've proven that over the years. When you talk about transparency and law enforcement, there's a, there's a certain amount of uh, information that you need to release just as soon as possible. And transparency, um, transparency with, with the citizens of Hopkins County, that's what allows you to prevent the rumor mill from starting. And I agree with Sheriff Tatum. If you kick the can down the road, it's just going to be somebody else's problem. Deal with it now. Deal with it now. So the transparency issue is huge with me. I want to make sure that I'm answering the questions before you ask them. 
Because if I can answer that question, you don't have to ask me. Thank you. Wait till we get to the end, and then y'all can poop poop up with them. It's okay to clap a little bit, but let's don't get in a challenge to who's hollering the fastest or the loudest. Uh, but next, well, this is our last question. How would you handle the transition or continuation of the sheriff's office, specifically dealing with personnel, existing programs? And anything else you can think of as you move forward. Well, let's go first on this one. Well, believe you me, I've given this some deep thought. <laughs> of course, I want to be your sheriff. I love Hopkins County. I want to stay here and I want to continue to do what I'm doing. But I love Hopkins County so much. If I was to lose this race, I would bring JP in just as soon as possible and start showing you what our... Um, programs are and how they're operated and I would encourage every person there to stay and work for him because you don't realize what an awesome uh, department we have in the people. Kenneth Dean, Tanner Crump, Corley Weatherford, you can't, you, you're not going to replace court, any of those people, you can't, they're not out there. None of the officers we have, you can't replace them because we've got the best of the best. They could go anywhere they wanted to and go to work. So the last thing I would want to do is destroy that department. I would uh, honor the citizens of Hopkins County, and uh, I would bring them in as soon as possible and, and, and move on down the road. But that ain't what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on staying here and being your sheriff. So hearing what I just heard uh, makes me feel good because I want to be the sheriff and working with Lewis and his team. And I'd just like to say right now that um, every person at Hopkins County Sheriff's Office, if I'm elected, they have a job. I can't do this alone. Why would I want to do it? I've heard rumors that I may bring in my own people. My own people aren't from Hopkins County. Why would I want them here? I want the people that know this county, that love this county, that want to be in this county. So my... My transition into the sheriff's job is to take what he is doing, take the legacy that Lewis Tatum has built in Hopkins County with the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office and grow it, continue. I'm a good, better, best type of person. I'm an optimist through and through. I think whatever you're doing, that's good. Can we do it better? I hope so. To be the best, we have to. So I will take uh, the, the strong legacy and all the various programs that Sheriff Tatum has built and grow them. Make them good. Make them better. They're already great. So that's, that's, my, uh, that's my transition uh, taking over uh, for Sheriff is, is continue what he has done, continue with the employees, grow them, lead them, and provide them with a future. So, thank you very much. Okay, you're going to do closings. And, uh, I, well, which one of y'all goes first? I've already turned my pages. I went first. You went first, so Joey P okay. goes first. So we talked about several things up here today, and I hope it inspired you to have more questions. Please contact me through the various uh, social media. I'll give everybody in here my phone number. I don't care. Uh, if you have more questions, ask them. I want to answer them. I love answering the questions. But what I want to build with and grow with Hopkins County Sheriff's Department is I want to protect the public trust that's placed in us by building a highly trained sheriff's department. Not that they're not trained. I want, to, I want to continue the training. Make it better. We'll provide excellent service and protection through leadership and partnership with the community. We don't do this alone. I want to partner with every single one of you. We'll build relationships by being transparent to the community we serve and strive to be a pinnacle law enforcement agency. 
And if you ask what a pinnacle law enforcement agency is, it's the highest mm -hmm. level of law enforcement. It's what other law enforcement agencies look to, inspire to do. <clears throat> we'll accomplish these visions and these mission statements by investing in our state. Just like the sheriff said, he's got the best. Why well, change anything? We'll be selfless, placing the community first. We'll be proud, a source of pride for our community, and we will be dedicated, devoted to our task and purpose with uncompromising loyalty and integrity. Thank you. Well, uh, I didn't have much time before, but before I forget, I better thank my wife, 43 years. Nine grandchildren. I got my mom and dad. I've known them for 61 years. <laughs> but uh, uh, one thing I need to touch on real quick before I, I run out of time. I have been worried to death about school security. Our, we've got six rural schools. We didn't have any protection out there for them. They had a few officers at a few schools. So what we did was we took our off-duty patrolmen, put them in those schools, and they worked on their off-duty days till they could hire a, uh, an officer. And now all the rural schools have those officers. I have got four officers in training and alert training right now. So when they get back, we're going to train with every rural school, even the city school, with alert training with the officers that's on duty there, uh, plus their guardians if they have any. And if you don't know who the guardians are, they're the people that carry guns also in those schools. I'm worried to death about their security. So what we did a long time ago is we started being very proactive. If a child, kid, teenager, young adult made any kind of a threat against that school, whether it be a text message, a note, a whisper, and it took a little while to get everybody cooperate with us, the superintendents, but they don't like handcuffs, so they started cooperating with us. <laughs> no, they work, they work real well with us. They let us know. We went out right then, and we still today, the first time we hear something, we go to their house right then. We're going to fight them on their grounds, not on their campus. We're going to fight them right there. And we have a, um, a good relationship with juvenile probation. So they have to help us with the juveniles to detain them and send them to juvenile detention. The adult ones, 17 and over, they go to the county jail. You make any threat against these schools, you're going to deal with us right then. Thank you all. Precinct 1, 3, the constables, and our sheriffs. We're uh, entirely blessed. We have a lot of good candidates, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down. Uh, we were supposed to be out of here around 7.30. As you can see, we're not, but that's okay. They're always so gracious here, and I thank them for that. <clears throat> I want to remind you guys that there is a special election for our state representative, the two candidates are Jill Dutton and Brent Money. They would have been here tonight, but they're at a forum in Canton, I believe. It's in Van Zandt, and it's sponsored by the Farm Bureau. So they send y'all their best, and their election is January the 30th. Please, if you're in this room, go vote. This is a runoff election. It's a very important uh, uh, civic position at the state. We need them. County governments are not self-rule. We can't just decide one day that we're going to change and do something else. We have to go to the state and have them actually pass legislation through the House, through the Senate, and the governor has to sign it for us to change anything at the county level. So this is a very important position you need for them to work with your county government through January the 26th. So remember to vote for that, and then you'll again have your primaries in March. So I also want to tell you that our next meeting, and I know all of y'all are coming back, it's uh, February the 13th, and it will be here. Starts at 6 o'clock, and Donnie, my husband, is uh, he's chair of the Hopkins County Republican Party, 
and he's SREC, which means he is the uh, state executive, state Republican executive committee man, which tells you that he serves on the state board of the Republican Party. And uh, so many of y'all have asked, well, how do we go to the state convention? How can we be a delegate? That's what he's going to be telling you guys. So come back. He'll explain the whole process to you. Anybody can go be a delegate at the state convention. And actually, you can go from the state convention.